Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about how to fire a virtual page view to Google Analytics with the help of Google Tag Manager. Before we get started these little videos are as always brought to you by gtmtraining.com and this time specifically by the GTM Training Guide where you find more resources surrounding Google Tag Manager. In this guide I present to you all the important blogs, the important people to follow and the different guides that are out there on the internet surrounding Google Tag Manager. And you can download it for free at gtmtraining.com slash guide. Now let's get started with today's topic, which is virtual page views. How would we install them with Google Tag Manager? Well, first of all, we have an event set up here in our Google Tag Manager account, which I showed you how to set up in the video button click tracking and this event files upon the click of the add to cart button on our demo page here. So if I click on this with the command key pressed, you see in the menu here that our Google Analytics event add to cart has fired and this is also available in the Google Analytics real time tracking and here we see that our event was just registered. Now, how could we accomplish not sending an, an event, but rather a page view, or in this case, a virtual page view? Well, first of all, I want to address why a virtual page view might be suitable here. If we go down to the conversions here in Google Analytics and the funnel visualization that you can set up, then you have your funnel, the cart, the checkout, and the board product here. What if you wanted to add as the first step here, the add to cart. Well, this is not possible with events. This is only possible with page views. So we would need to have a virtual page view because it's not really a page view added to Google Analytics. And then we can add this to our funnel visualization. So this would be one use case where you would like to use virtual page views. Now virtual page views also have a downside because they inflate the page view count. So every time somebody triggers a virtual page view, which is not really a page view, then it will also impact the overall page views that you received on your page. So just keep that in mind and think about when it is appropriate to use virtual page views. If you want to use it in the funnel visualization, then I would say this is a good idea to do. So let's see how we could accomplish this. First of all, in our previous video, we have already set up the add to cart click trigger, which basically any tag, once somebody clicks on a add to cart button. So we don't have to set this up from scratch. We can reuse this. And instead of opening up a new tag, I want to actually rewrite this Google Analytics event tag. So let's click into this. And the first thing that we want to do is rename our tag so we know what is firing. And the tag template Google Analytics stays the same. The universal analytics tracking is still active, but we want to change the configurations. Now we have still our tracking ID here stored in a variable. And the only thing we need to change is the track type. And this track type will change to page view. And at this stage, we could already continue and fire our tag upon a add to cart click, but it would fire a page view with the normal URL and the name of the site up here, um, which would just double the page view count of this product Flying Ninja, which we don't want to do. We want to manipulate the page path here and the title. So how can we do that? We have here under the configurations, under more settings, the field to set option. And there we can set up fields which we can manipulate. Now, which fields would be put in here? Those are predefined. Once we click on them, we have here a list of them and they are all described within the Google Analytics reference. Here's a Google Analytics um, field reference where we can, for example, manipulate the sample rate or the client ID and many other 
parameters what we want to look at is the actual page path so where can we find that let me see here we have the document referrer the document name and down here we have the document location URL this is what we need it's the document path and the document title now we have as the document path which we want to manipulate the page as the field name and we need to input a text for example the slash foo the slash is very important so Google Analytics picks it up correctly so let's transfer that let's put in here page and as a value we can choose really any value I will call this virtual page add to cart now we can also manipulate the title of the document that would be the field reference here document title because we don't want the document title being flying ninja demo shop but rather also add to cart now we already noticed that you don't have that many fields available like in the event tracking but you can always make up directories for example so you can categorize them correctly and recognize them within Google Analytics again we won't do this for now let's just stick to add to cart and title add to cart and we can continue here and try this out let's refresh our preview in debug mode and head over to flying ninja page here and reload this page too now I click on the add to cart button with the command key pressed again go back to the site and upon our GTM click we have our Google Analytics page view deployed once we look into the properties of this tag we see that the page was set to add to cart and the title should be add to cart too. We can control this within our tag assistant by Google. We have here the Google Analytics tag and there were actually two page view fired on this page because when we enter this page and when we clicked on the add to cart button, so that's logical. The second page view here is with the title add to cart and the track page is add to cart as well. Now we also can control this within the tool of Google Analytics. So let's go over to the real-time reporting under content. We can see that the page views came in. Unfortunately, we cannot see our virtual page view here in this active user menu because we are not right now on this page anymore because it's just upon button click that this event gets fired and then the page view gets closed again. So we are not actively on this virtual page anymore but we can see it under page views and I've already fired multiple events here with our slash add to cart and the page title add to cart so this is working fine and Google Analytics is receiving the data correctly now you can also later see this data in your behavior report under site content in all pages to spin this to the end, you would go over to Google Tag Manager and publish this as a version to all your users so your new virtual page view gets triggered on the Add to Cart button click. And that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. Other than that, you can still head over to gtmtraining.com guide to grab your free copy of this resource guide where you'll find all the important resources out on the internet where you can learn more about Google Tag Manager. I'm Julian, till next time. So now let's get started with scroll tracking within GTM. And in order to, and what we'll do in this little tutorial is implement a custom HTML tag, which will basically act as our event listener in Google Tag Manager and when somebody but now let's get started talking about bounce rate so the bounce rate is often seen as this metric 
to evaluate landing pages. So does the traffic that hits my page actually stick around or leave the page? There's actually a little bit of a problem here with the bounce rate because the way that it's defined in Google Analytics. Let's have a look. So a bounce in.